Kim, what's on your radar? Well, I'd like you to meet Edward Durr. Now, Edward Durr really represents the big shift that we're seeing in American politics right now between the Republican Party and the Democratic Party. And Edward Durr could maybe teach the Democratic Party a few lessons about how they could possibly win back the good graces of the American middle class to the point where they don't end up clobbered in one year's time during the midterm elections, which I'm positive they're worried about right now. Now, for some odd reason, this race has not been called yet by the Associated Press, even though every vote has been counted and every precinct reported. But Edward Durr is running for New Jersey State Senate to represent District 3. Now, the thing is, his opponent is the president of the New Jersey State Senate and is considered the second most powerful man in the Garden State. And as of right now, Edward Durr currently leads the race by 2,000 votes. But again, the race hasn't been called. Stephen Sweeney has held this seat for the past 17 years. So this is a giant upset. Now, this race really hasn't made national news because this is not a national seat. This is a local seat inside, inside of New Jersey. All eyes have been focused on the Virginia governor's race, which ended in an upset for Democrat Terry McAuliffe and New Jersey and the New Jersey governor's race with incumbent Democrat Governor Murphy barely squeaking by. And the focus has been on these two races, trying to dissect what the voters want or don't want and what the Democrats can do to course correct, a lot of which has been focused on schools and critical race theory. And you can't really use that to explain what happened in New Jersey, but it doesn't seem like the pundits really care that much. They're running with this entire, the party has moved too far left message, or that congressional Democrats have let the squad run, run the, the control the message, and that is why they're being defeated. But there's actually something deeper going on that's being completely over looked and Edward Durr shines a light on this if people would only pay attention. Now, we're going to watch his campaign ad here in a moment, but before we do, I want to tell you a little bit about Edward Durr. He's a father, a grandfather. He was born and raised in New Jersey, and he was a trucker for 25 years. He's never held political office, though he's run for office in the past. And there was a little bit of an urban legend that Edward financed his campaign with a total of $153. But he did clarify this when he was interviewed on Fox News, stating that the amount was actually about $5,000. Perhaps the most shocking upset from last night's election happened in the state of New Jersey, where Senate President Steve Sweeney, a longtime political power broker with aspirations to be the next governor, is about to be upset by a truck driver named Ed. Republican Edwin Edward Durr is leading Sweeney by a few thousand votes, and despite having spent around $5,000 on his campaign compared to Sweeney, who had hundreds of thousands of dollars in his campaign war chest. Yeah, $5,000 to defeat an incumbent who has held that spot for nearly two decades. The second most powerful man in New Jersey, the president of the New Jersey State Senate, just probably got beat out by an unknown trucker with five grand. So who is this guy? The Senate president has spent 20 years in Trenton. Higher taxes, increasing debt, and a rising cost of living. We deserve better. New Jersey, it's time for a change. So together, let's end single party rule. Vote for me, Edward Dare for Senate. So there you go, Edward Durr. He's a typical blue collar, normal guy. Doesn't have a lot of money nor fancy education, just your run of the mill New Jerseyite. When asked by Fox News what would be the first thing he does when he arrives at the Capitol in Trenton, New Jersey, he answered, I don't know. <laughs> he was extremely honest. He said he doesn't know what he doesn't know, but he's going to learn what he needs to know. He then went on to say, I guarantee you one thing, I will be the voice of the people because the people deserve a voice. And that is really what this boils down to. Edward embodies what the American people want right now. Normal people running our government, not elites, not bought off politicians who've been there forever and ever, not people who know how to play a game or who make promises, then break promises, then dangle them back in front of us like what Nancy Pelosi just did yesterday. She scrambled to figure out what Democrats can possibly do to win back the middle class. So she announced they'll be adding back into the people package the paid family and medical leave that they took out and now they've put back in because you little people who eat mass produced ice cream want things, right? Well, Democrats have been missing the point and one of the symptoms 
systems of missing the point has been this obsession with things like racism, sexism, bigotry, Trumpism, insurrections, Russians, anti-vaxxers, and on and on and on. And yes, the two packages they're crafting and will hopefully put forward at some point, don't focus on these cultural hot button issues, but instead focus on things that would help average and poor Americans. This is true. But they don't focus on the greater problem, the deeper issues of the broken system itself. Many of the prog programs inside of these packages act more like band-aids, and people aren't really wanting band-aids. They're wanting fixes. What people are seeing is during the two biggest crises of the past 15 years, the housing crisis and now the pandemic, with Democrats at the helm, the rich got richer and the average American, the middle class and the poor got poorer. And in the first crisis, people lost their homes while the banks were bailed out. The banks were then able to sell those homes for a profit, often to investors who then turned large swaths of the American middle class into renters. Not to mention it set people back in their careers, which impacted their life trajectory. College grads couldn't get jobs. People who should have been climbing in their careers to the point where they would be able to buy a home were set back nearly a decade. People who should have retired with something in Instead, retired with nothing. It was a disaster, and it led to very frustrated Americans wanting serious change. So much change, Trump was elected. And now during this pandemic, Democrats are doing it again. The rich are getting richer while small businesses collapse from lockdowns and supply chain backlogs, which are exacerbated by mandates. Democrats' response to people panicking about their lost businesses seems to be, be quiet, we know what's best. Stay home and order from Jeff Bezos. It's safer. Kids are now behind in their education while parents are being told it's none of their business and frontline and essential workers who were told to risk their lives during the height of the pandemic are now being told they need to do as the government says or be discarded. This isn't going over well for Democrats. The recall election, though was not successful in California, was still a referendum on Democrats indicating that things need to change. These elections in Virginia and New Jersey are a referendum on Democrats indicating things need to change. And Edward Dunn, who is now most likely ousting the president of the New Jersey State Senate, is a referendum on Democrats indicating that things need to change. And that thing that needs to change isn't give us things to make us happy, though they should be spending our tax dollars on things that benefit us and not their donors. But the real message is stop thinking you know best. You're actually ruining our lives. Get out of our way. Give us a shot at the American dream, which is home ownership, steady, good pay, quality, affordable education, good health care, the ability to have, if we so choose, a stay at home parent in the household. We want to start our own small business and afford to take annual family vacations to the Grand Canyon or Disney World. And we don't want to worry about all of that suddenly going away because some big money interests buying off our politicians got greedy and our government stopped listening to what we the people want. The Democratic Party needs to reconnect with the American middle class. They lost their way somewhere in the noise, and they haven't owned up to the fact that many of our pol many of their policies have led to the destruction of the middle class. And instead of owning up to this, it seems that Democratic Party wants to instead point the finger and say the reason you can't have nice things is because you're all a bunch of racists. Well, that isn't working anymore. Americans aren't buying it. And these latest rounds of elections from the West Coast recall in California all the way to the elections in the East Coast, Americans aren't buying it anymore. We want change. We want normal people to represent us who will, like Edward Durr says, be the voice of the people because the people deserve a voice. But the big question is, will Democrats finally listen this time, guys? You know, in 2016, we had this discussion over and over. It was listen to the people, they're frustrated. And instead, it seems like Democrats doubled down and closed their ears even harder. Uh, so is it this time, are they finally going to say, we got to build back this middle class. And it's not just give us things because that's not going to do it. There needs to be some serious change on inflation, uh, cost of education, homes, right? We've got skyrocketing rents. I mean, what are they going to do? I don't know. Ryan, I'm going to ask you because you're, you know, you, you're in, you know, you know more about what's going on in the Democratic Party. What do you think they're going to do? I mean, they're, well, <laughs> they're going to be in the wilderness for a a, a very a very long time. Some de you know some Democrats in 2016 uh, did get the message, and you saw a ch you know a change in rhetoric and you know and a change in what they're pushing for. Other Democrats are just going to have to be defeated and 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 run out. Like the, if if the Democratic Party is going to actually start to become you know responsive to a to a popular base, that it's going to be a combination of of people losing their jobs. And and some people like like Schumer, for instance, you know, just kind of 
get, getting the new terrain and deciding to actually you know, go in a different direction from what he had been before. Yeah. I mean, both political parties benefit from the, politi the other political party going too insane, right? The, 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 pro the Republicans' problem have is, like, a lot of what they—they're they're generally popular. It's a center-right country in some ways. They have some structural advantages. So also, if they could just be normal, they could, like, govern forever. But then they had to, like, give it to Trump and be totally subsumed by Trumpism and by, like, the cult of personality around Trump himself, which alienates so many of these, uh, these people who would naturally gravitate or have gravitated because of the divisive policies of the Democrats to their coalition. Then they push those people away. Like, Trump might come, you know, just— just stomping his way into the 2024 contest, even though every you know remotely sane person with an R next to their names wishes he would sit it out and they think they would have a better chance without him. So that's that's a, even if Democrats don't get the message, I guess that could happen. And I'm I'm not sure it's even fair to say it's a center right country anymore, if only because the the spectrum doesn't exist like it used to. Yeah, like people are. Uh, people are all over, people are all over the. It's place. a right people are culturally uh, col uh, majority right cultural and again I guess left economic would probably be the right and and, ang Possibly. and angry that uh, so much has been lost over the last forty years. Yeah, I mean the middle class needs to be built back, and there's got to be a way to do this, and it can't just be we're going to give you things in, in order to make your life easy. People want an actual shot at the American yeah. dream, right? Yeah. I mean that's what really the focus needs to be on. And I feel like the Republican Party has, you know, whether, yeah, I get it, and yeah. Trump, you know, but the Republican Party has still been able to to start embracing that message. And, they're not, and the biggest thing is they're not getting in the way yeah. as much of these elections, right? I mean, that's what's happening with Democrats is they're getting in the way of elections and they just yeah. should allow elections to happen. No, that's a good point. Uh, all right, thank you. We'll have more rising right after this.